Willow Project has received its final approvals from the Biden administration. And although there are already lawsuits challenging this approval, it's looking more likely than not that the Willow Project will move forward. So in this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about the Willow Project, what it is and what it isn't, what's been approved and what hasn't, who is for it and who is against it, and what costs as well as benefits it will have. I'll also give you my own personal thoughts on the project at the end of the video. This is the Willow Project Explained. No more drilling on federal lands. No more drilling, including offshore. The Willow Project gets the green light. Alaskans want the Willow Project. Alaska needs the Willow Project. It's not just good for Alaska, it's good for our national security. Not as, as a subsistence-based culture, Inupiaq culture, we would not be in support of a project if we thought at any moment that it was going to threaten that way of life. So I was encouraged to make this video by a subscriber who reached out to me on Instagram, who felt like they needed a clearer picture as to what was really even happening with the Willow Project. It's obviously been a very big news story recently, but a lot of the coverage I found has been pretty unhelpful when it comes to understanding what this project even is and why it's such a big deal and why so many people are talking about it. I reached out on Instagram and my community page here on YouTube as well, and it seems like there's a lot of people out there who just want to understand what's going on here. So that's what I want to give you all today, is just the information you need to understand the Willow Project. All right, let's start with where this project even is. As you've probably heard, it's in far northern Alaska. But more specifically, it's located on a piece of federal public land called the National Petroleum Reserve in Alaska, the NPRA. The NPRA is 23 million acres and is the single largest piece of public land in America. It was originally established as the Naval Petroleum Reserve No. 4 in 1923 by President Warren Harding. It was just that a naval oil reserve. This was right around the time the US Navy was switching its ships over to petroleum power, and several of these preserves were established in case of an emergency, so the Navy wouldn't run out of oil. You may remember these from the Teapot Dome scandal, which three of these reserves were part of. Anyway, let's fast forward to 1976, and the Naval Petroleum Reserve number no. 4 is transferred from the Department of the Navy to the Department of the Interior, where it came under the management of the Bureau of Land Management, and renamed to the National Petroleum Reserve in Alaska, again, the NPRA. After the transfer, there were two laws which authorized oil and gas exploration on the reserve, subject to the proper administrative procedures, the Naval Petroleum Reserves Production Act of 1976 and the Department of Interior Appropriations Act of 1981. Now, even after these authorizations, there wasn't a lot of drilling on the reserve, the land remained relatively undisturbed, serving as the home for millions of birds, one of the largest caribou herds on Earth, musk ox, arctic fox, wolves, grizzly and polar bears, moose, seals, whales, and walruses, as well as, of course, native Alaskans. In fact, there are four special areas, that's actually what they're called, there are four special areas within the reserve that are supposed to be managed so that any oil exploration is, quote, conducted in a manner which will assure the maximum protection of such surface values to the extent consistent with the requirements of this act for the exploration of the reserve. These areas are the Teshekpuk Lake, Colville River, Utukok Highlands, and the Kasigalik Lagoon. Essentially, these are sensitive areas which are supposed to be treated with a little more scrutiny when it comes to decision making. Again, this all takes place on the NPRA, and this is the backdrop on which the Willow Project is now the subject of debate. Now, the Willow Project will be developed by ConocoPhillips on the far eastern perimeter of the NPRA, near the native village of Nuksu. As originally proposed, the Willow Project would have included five drilling pads and a total of 250 oil wells, but as currently approved, it will include three drilling pads and 199 wells. The project will include development within two of those special areas I mentioned above, the Teshikpuk Lake and the Colville River. And even with this size reduction, 
This will still be the largest oil extraction project ever undertaken on federal public lands. The Willow Project is estimated to cost between eight and $10 billion and generate around 186,000 barrels of oil per day, totaling 576 million barrels over the course of its 30-year development cycle. Oil is not expected to be extracted from the site for another eight to 10 years. It will disturb just under 500 acres of area on the surface and will, of course, require the construction of infrastructure typically associated with oil extraction. This includes hundreds of miles of pipelines and roads, both gravel and ice, an airstrip, a gravel mine, a processing facility, which includes a 98 megawatt power plant, lots of heavy machinery, and lots of vehicles. All right, next let's move on to a timeline of how we got where we are. 1999, ConocoPhillips obtains their first leases to extract oil in the MPRA in the area that would ultimately become the Willow Project. 2015, ConocoPhillips discovers massive oil deposits within their lease area. In 2018, they begin the process of obtaining permits to drill for oil. And in 2020, the Trump administration issues an environmental impact statement approving the original five pad proposal. In 2021, this approval was vacated by the District Court of Alaska and sent back to the BLM for three reasons. One, they didn't include global greenhouse gas emissions in their calculations. Two, they improperly assumed that the leases held by ConocoPhillips entitled them to extract, quote, all possible oil. And three, they didn't afford, quote unquote, maximum protection for the Teshekpuk Lake special area. So BLM goes back, addresses the court's concerns, and in July of 2022, issues another environmental impact statement and in February of this year issues their final decision. President Biden then approves the project on March 13th. All right, now let's talk about the Biden administration's rationale here. A lot of people have been wondering why this administration would have approved a project like Willow given his campaign promises. No more drilling on federal lands, no more drilling, including offshore. No ability for the oil industry to continue to drill, period. And the commitments his administration has already made to tackle climate change, such as the Inflation Reduction Act. According to several legal experts, the Biden administration might have had its hands tied, legally speaking. Because ConocoPhillips has owned these leases since the late 1990s, they have essentially a legal right to develop them. As this line of thinking goes, the Biden administration didn't want to challenge that right in court and undertake a multi-billion dollar taxpayer-funded lawsuit only to see the project approved anyway. Instead, again, according to the Biden administration, they decided to move forward with a scaled down project and impose additional restrictions on oil exploration elsewhere in the NPRA. This includes the elimination of two of the five originally proposed wells, one of which would have posed a significant threat to the aforementioned Teshekpuk Lake. By their own admission, this will reduce the amount of freshwater needed for the project and eliminate 11 miles of roads, 20 miles of pipelines, and 133 acres of gravel. Also, 68,000 acres of ConocoPhillips leases will be returned to the federal government. In addition to the size reduction, the Biden administration will limit or restrict oil drilling on an additional 13 million acres within the NPRA as well as 3 million acres offshore in the Beaufort Sea planning area, 98% of which has already been protected under the Obama administration. It is worth noting here though, that these actions are subject to change under future administrations. These are not permanent protections. All right, so that's the Willow Project in terms of what was approved, what will be built, and what will be extracted. Now, let's talk about who is in favor of the project and why, and who is opposed to the project and why. Let's start with the proponents. Of course, the oil and gas industry, particularly ConocoPhillips, is in favor of the project. They stand to make billions of dollars here, so no need to go into too much detail on that one. In addition, Alaska's entire bipartisan congressional delegation, including Republican Senators Lisa Murkowski and Dan Sullivan, as well as Democratic Representative Mary Paltola, who is the first Alaska native ever elected to Congress, are all in support of the project, as well as several unions. Many indigenous communities, including the Arctic Slope Regional Corporation, are in favor of the project. 
There are indigenous communities opposed to the project as well, but we'll talk about them in a minute. Now, in general, the arguments in favor of the Willow Project tend to be economic. They talk about the need to reduce our dependence on foreign oil, particularly from authoritarian states like Russia and Saudi Arabia, and about the revenue and jobs the project will provide to local communities. According to the Bureau of Land Management, the Willow Project will generate 2,500 jobs and up to $17 billion in federal tax revenue. The Naval Petroleum Reserves Production Act states that 50% of this revenue is required to be distributed to the state of Alaska. The act also stipulates that priority for that funding is required to go to the communities most affected by development i.e. those closest and most impacted by the Willow Project. In addition, a fiscal analysis by the state of Alaska concluded that the project could generate over $5 billion for the state, $1 billion for the North Slope Borough, and $4 billion for the local communities most affected by Willow, all by the year 2053. All right, now let's talk about those who are opposed to the Willow Project and why. This includes most environmental organizations and activists, as well as a few indigenous communities, including the village of Nuksut, the community closest to where Willow will be taking place. Now, the opposing argument you've most likely heard is about climate. Environmental organizations are calling the project a carbon bomb, which when all the oil is extracted, used, and burned, will generate 239 million metric tons of carbon dioxide, or an equivalent thereof, over 30 years roughly 9.2 million tons annually. To give you some perspective, the United States generates 5.6 billion metric tons of carbon dioxide annually. Opponents state that approving the Willow Project only further increases our dependence on fossil fuels and locks us into more carbon emissions at a time when we should be focusing on reducing our carbon emissions as much as possible. In addition, the BLM's own analysis predicts effects that are quote unquote long-term and of high intensity for the region's indigenous communities, particularly the village of Nuksut. This includes a negative impact on these communities' ability to conduct subsistence hunting, which forces them to eat store-bought food, which is more expensive, less nutritious, and further contributes to food scarcity in the region. This is not to mention the fact that subsistence hunting is a cultural practice these communities have carried out for thousands of years. The analysis also notes that the inability to practice their subsistence lifestyle, as well as air and noise pollution and overall stressful conditions, could lead to negative public health outcomes like anxiety and depression. The BLM acknowledges that these impacts are already being felt, stating, quote, rapid modernization and development, as well as other multiple stressful conditions, including significant changes in diet, housing, and traditional culture, has led to negative health outcomes, including suicide, end quote. Overall, quote, the effects on subsistence and sociocultural systems may be highly adverse and disproportionately borne by the Nuksut population, end quote. Other concerns include the potential for negative impacts on wildlife like caribou and migratory birds, the potential for thawing permafrost to induce equipment failures and subsequent oil and gas leaks, localized air and water pollution, and as with any oil extraction project, the possibility of a damaging spill in an ecologically sensitive area. Okay, that is the Willow Project. Everything you need to know to be informed and make your own decision on how you feel about it. Now, I promise I will let you know my own thoughts on Willow. And if you've followed my channel long enough, I don't think it should come as any surprise that I am opposed to it. The things I value most, wildlife conservation, landscape conservation, protection of public lands, a transition away from fossil fuels, and a healthy environment, are directly negatively impacted by the Willow Project, and I can't support it. That being said, I also cannot fault those who do support it. I look at those numbers, thousands of jobs and billions of dollars for communities that have already been left behind, and I can't blame them for wanting to benefit from something we have for so long already profited from. I think it sucks that we are in a system where the communities that will be most impacted by Willow and projects like it are the same ones who are reliant on it to feed their families and sustain their livelihoods. But I can't fault them for supporting it. It goes to show just how badly we need to transition away from fossil fuels. This is, of course, my personal opinion, and I encourage you to look into this for yourself and form your own opinion. There are lots of resources in the description. And to wrap things up here, I just want to say this. Some of the discourse around the Willow Project has deeply disturbed me. 
it has been filled with sensationalized coverage and misinformation and fear-mongering, and in my opinion, has only served to sow further division and weaken the opposition to the Willow Project, of which I am a part of. It is my firm belief that if we are to stand up to projects like Willow in the future, and there will be more projects like it, and they won't be limited to oil extraction. If we want to stand up for our oceans, and our forests, and our public lands, and our futures, we need to do so from a place of informed understanding and critical thought. We need to stop telling people what to think and help them understand how to think. How to think critically about how to oppose projects like Willow and about how to solve some of the most complex environmental problems facing us today. We need to attack these problems with facts, data, direct, measured arguments, and informed debate. Only then can we enter the fight against a project like Willow with a chance of winning. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.